Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 69th episode of Don't Forget the Popcorn. Some of the most underrated movies, in my opinion, are the films that represent urban neighborhoods. Some would call them hood movies or hood classics, films that typically show us what the smaller percentage of Americans live like, movies that show us how blacks, browns, and other groups live, movies that have been cherished and loved by certain groups for decades. A lot of these films are very relatable to certain folks because they represent them and show things that they've likely gone through or seen themselves. Now, I love a good hood classic. Unfortunately, we all know they don't make them like they used to. Some would say Tyler Perry killed the genre, but we do still get some great stories that represent a lot of these groups. I think filmmaking has just evolved to a point, and in this current climate, these movies get a lot of attention and acclaim. I mean, Moonlight won Best Picture and was a box office success. It seems that more people are interested in these stories these days, and they stand up and rival any type of movie being made. So I guess the hood feel to these modern stories just isn't there like it used to be. Also, the country has changed a whole lot since, and these movies we're going to discuss came out, and a lot of these were direct reflections of what was happening right then and there. Not saying a lot of this stuff still isn't happening, because it certainly is, but with technology and a bigger connection to the outside world and more resources, a lot of people from these communities are thriving and really are wanting more for their lives. There was just a different attitude with the Golden Age Hood films. I'm very sorry if your favorite Hood classic didn't make the list, so make sure you guys give me your list or tell me which one I missed. I have a few rules of how this is going to go. First rule, it must be released between 1986 and 2006. That period represented a certain time frame where urban neighborhoods and the cinema that represented them had a certain feel and attitude. They captured almost a golden age of hood cinema, kind of like rap music. Its golden age was really the same time period, with a particular focus going to the 90s for both mediums. By the early 90s, gangs, drugs, and drug dealings influenced a lot of this art. We saw a major shift in the urban community because of it, which really popped off in the 80s. Rule two. The movies must be about people from that community told through the eyes of someone who represents that community. The filmmaker being from or a part of that community would just be a bonus, although they don't have to be. Number three, I chose to leave out Spike Lee movies because he is a bit of his own brand when it comes to films. And I don't know if his movies would necessarily be considered hood films. But if we're going to throw him in, Do the Right Thing, Clockers, Crooklyn, and He Got Game would be up for consideration. Number four, I'm picking 20 movies with no honorable mentions. There will be a nice mix of comedy, drama, crime, and action. A mix of pure entertainment, cultural impact and significance, and a bit of my own personal bias, of course. Number five, I stuck with America. So no City of God or La N, although those are both incredible films. Number six, I stayed away from really big, high-grossing, and award-buzzy ones like 8 Mile, Hustle and & Flow, and Training Day. There are an exception of two that did get some Oscar love, but they could not be left off this list. So like and subscribe, I appreciate it, and let's get into the best hood classic movies. Number 20, New Jersey Drive, 1995, directed by Nick Gomez. New Jersey Drive is a dreary yet fun tale about a group of boys who like to steal cars and joyride and good old NJ. These young kids start to get out of control with their crimes. They see their friends murdered, book for crimes, and some even begin turning on each other. This is one that a lot of people haven't seen, but it's an underground hood classic for sure. It's a fun time with some wild car chases, fights, and some good old-fashioned police brutality. If you haven't seen this one, I would definitely check it out. I ain't going to say it's going to blow you away, but it's definitely one you need to see if you call yourself a hood film aficionado. 19, Above the Rim, 1994, directed by Jeff Polak. You know I had to put a sports movie on here. Honestly, it's a cliche story with one of the worst opening scenes, but somehow it still works very well. We follow a high school basketball player who aspires to go to Georgetown. He is a hothead in typical sports movie fashion who has to learn to get along with others and respects the lessons that are given to him. The young man has a lot of lessons to learn about friends and family as he fights to achieve his goals. We get an all-star performance from Tupac. 
a fun performance from Marlon Wayans, and one of the best hood movie soundtracks. We also have a cameo from the late Bernie Mac. Rest in peace. He was a staple in some of these hood movies. This is Def, a great hood coming of age story. Number 18, ATL, 2006, directed by Chris Robinson. One of the newest movies on the list, this movie stars T.I., Big Boy, Lauren London, and Evan Ross. We get a fun Southern coming-of-age story that fits the time period. The beauty of this movie is it captures the essence of the older hood films with a modern twist. We follow T.I. and his friends as they all try and figure out what they should do after high school. You got the smart guy, the hood dude, the fun dude who ain't from there, and the quiet, talented dreamer. It's got all the fun hood tropes with the modern twist, some good laughs, and some decent performances. This, in my opinion, is one of the last great hood classic movies. This film gave us the birth of Nunu and Lauren London. Number 17. Don't be a menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. 1996, directed by Paris Barclay. A lot of y'all know this movie is just Don't Be a Menace. This is one of the funniest hood movies ever made. A parody movie that makes fun of all the hood movie tropes that were out at the time. It stars Sean and Marlon Wayans as Trey and Loke Dog. This movie mostly follows boys in the hood and menace to society. It perfectly makes some great humor out of these serious, crazy hood movies. Makes light of the situations and so many fun little Easter eggs in the movie that it demands multiple watches. Marlon Wayans gives one of his best performances of all time as Loke Dog. This movie, along with I'ma Get You Sucker, opened the door for some of the good parody films we got later on, like the Scary Movie series and Not Another Teen Movie. In order to get this movie, you must have seen Menace to Society and Boys in the Hood. There are some other movies sprinkled in there too, but it mostly focuses on those. I have seen this movie countless times and still laugh hard every time I watch it. Number 16. The Players Club, 1998, directed by Ice Cube. Ice Cube and his directorial debut. This is one of the hardest hitting movies from the hood from a lady perspective. It follows Diamond, a young stripper trying to raise her son and finish college, but the lifestyle and her cousin who moves in with her start to try and get the best of her. This movie is kind of crazy, a dark comedy that shows some of the underbellies of stripping and prostitution and some gritty and hard-hitting scenes, but some funny-ass ones, too. We get some great performances from Jamie Foxx, Bernie Mac, rest in peace, AJ Johnson, rest in peace, Ice Cube, Charlie Murphy, rest in peace, Crystal Wilson, and a breakout performance from Lisa Ray. So sad watching this movie and seeing all these dead heroes in this film. Number 15. The Wood, 1999, directed by Rick Famuyiwa. The Wood is one of the best hood coming-of-age stories about kids who aren't involved in hood shit. It's a double story showing the three leads currently and in the past when they were in high school, showing flashbacks of how and why they are how they are currently. This movie follows the three leads as one of them is struggling to go to his wedding as his boys try and convince him to do so. This film is hilarious and shows us the hood can still be fun, even though they do run into some problems with gang members. This is a fun time ride and stars black 90s darling Omar Epps. It's also got the kid from Fresh in it. Definitely watch this movie for a good laugh. Number 14, House Party, 1990, directed by Reginald Hudlin. One of the best party movies of all time and one of the best high school movies of all time. This movie follows rappers Kid and Play as Kid is trying to sneak out of the house to attend Play's party. This is a funny movie with some of the best dance and party scenes all time. And they even stay sober during this damn party. We get a fun freestyle battle and we see these boys trying to get girls, avoid bullies, and one-up each other in the rap game. The sequels are okay, but this one is the one. This is the 90s in a time capsule right here. Definitely a fun time hood movie. Number 13, Fresh, 1994, directed by Boaz Yakin. Well, Fresh is one of the craziest coming-of-age movies I've ever seen, and we get another New York entry. 
Fresh follows a young 12-year-old drug dealer who is wise well beyond his years. He meets with his dad, played by Sam Jackson, to play chess in the park, and you see this young man use his chess skills in real life to achieve an ultimate goal. It's kind of insane and scary how smart this kid is and the things he does to get ahead. This movie is tragic and really sad to think of these things happening to young kids. It's beautifully acted by Sean Nelson, Sam Jackson, and Gina Carlo Esposito. This movie has one of the best child performances of all time. A couple scenes in this had my mouth wide open. Number 12, Blood In, Blood Out, Bound by Honor, 1993, directed by Taylor Hackford. This movie is one of the most underrated movies of all time, let alone hood movies. This movie follows three guys who grow up in East LA who end up taking completely different turns in life as they grow up. This is a gritty tough movie. Drugs, prison, murder, all of it. And we get a nice perspective from the Hispanic point of view. This movie is an epic, clocking over three hours and it flies by. It's a film about choices and consequences, trust and loyalty. It deals with not feeling accepted in deals and race relations. This is a unique film in the hood category, but absolutely one of the best. If you haven't seen this, make sure you watch the director's cut. It's got some good action, drama, and a great story. I know a lot of you haven't seen this. Seek it out and watch it. Number 11, Dead Presidents, 1995, directed by the Hughes Brothers. Dead President is another underrated classic that is also one of my favorites for sure. This film is another notch on the Hughes Brothers' belt, and this always lived in Menace's shadow. It follows a group of minorities who end up going to Vietnam in 1969, and it shows how life was coming back to the hood for these guys. Life was insane, and it shows how these people were treated, and they see how the hood has changed with drugs coming in. It shows the struggles of a military man and the desperation that comes with it. When desperation is at an all-time high, a group of these men plan an armored truck heist that goes terribly wrong, but is one of the best action scenes in any 90s movie. Dead Presidents is a great story that shows the other side of military life for minorities. Definitely a lot of good messages in this movie. Now, before we get into the top 10, I wanted to have a quick little intermission. Guys, do me a huge favor if you made it this far. Like and sub to the channel. I appreciate it. It's free. Thank you. I have a streaming recommendation for y'all. Since we're talking about hood movies, I decided to throw a modern urban story in here. My streaming recommendation is 1001, 2003, starring Tiana Taylor. It is streaming on Amazon Prime. This film is amazing. It follows a young woman getting out of jail who takes her child that was in foster care and raises him all the way into adulthood. Now, guys, that sounds simple, but this movie is very layered and very good. I would highly check it out. Guys, do that. Okay, let's get back to the content and let's jump into the top 10. Number 10, Belly, 1998, directed by Hype Williams. Belly is one a lot of people have a lot of issues with, which I can see why. But this was a childhood favorite for me. I watched this with my uncle all the time as a kid. This movie is a story about two best friends who move up in the ranks of crime in New York. It stars Nas and DMX in the leads. And although Nas is my favorite rapper, he is not my favorite actor. Still, with his bad narration and performance, this movie still hits super hard with Hype Williams directing this movie almost like a music video, where his expertise lied. It's got some cool vibes and some great action scenes. The scene where Ox kills all the Jamaicans is one of my favorite hood movie scenes. This film has tons of flaws and issues, but we get some good guest appearances from Tyron Turner, T-Boz, Terrell Hicks, and Method Man. It's a fun short ride that's quite original in its style and execution. Number 9, Baby Boy, 2001, directed by John Singleton. Baby Boy, honestly, this is one of the most important hood movies for a lot of reasons. It shows Jody, played by Tyrese, who is a lazy mama's boy who don't work or do a damn thing. He's got two baby's moms, and he's only 20, I think. We see him going through this adult coming-of-age story, learning real values about life, love, and commitment. John Singleton gives us a funny and realistic landscape of a more everyday guy who is really a product of his environment. 
We get Tyrese giving a pretty good performance in an early role from him. Vin Raines, AJ Johnson, Taraji P. Henson, Omar Gooding give us some great supporting roles as well. This movie was a staple on BET and VH1 in the early 90s. I think myself and everyone else has seen this movie probably at least 50 times. Man, I really miss John Singleton. Rest in peace. Sucks a lot of these artists on this list are no longer with us. We'll talk about John Singleton later, though. Number eight, Deep Cover, 1992, directed by Bill Duke. Deep Cover on the incognito tip. I kind of feel like I'm cheating with this one because although this is told by a guy from the hood, he's a cop, so it's almost like they cancel each other out. But this is a hood movie nonetheless, and one of my personal favorite ones. This crazy film follows a cop who goes deep undercover as a drug dealer and ends up teaming up with a shady lawyer and getting lost between the worlds of good and evil. This movie is an action-packed ride with a lot of shocks, twists, and turns along the way. Bill Duke delivers some incredible direction, and we get a great performance from Lawrence Fishburne and possibly Jeff Goldblum's best performance. If you haven't seen this one, this is one that will definitely shock you and how good it is. For the film nerds and cinephiles out there, the Criterion Blu-ray for this movie is incredible with one of their best covers. I'll throw that out for you to see real quick. Number 7. New Jack City, 1991, directed by Mario Van Peoples. This is one that really needs no type of intro. New Jack City has been a staple in urban culture since its release and is one of the pioneering New York hood movies. We follow Nino Brown, a young drug dealer who is really moving up the ranks of the crack game and is getting attention from all the wrong people. We see the rise and fall of a man who would stop at nothing to make it to the top. Chris Rock's portrayal as Pookie is one of the best attic portrayals we've ever seen. It's up there with Sam Jackson and Jungle Fever. Well, probably not that good. We see why Ice-T always plays law enforcement, and of course we get a top-notch performance from the go Wesley Snipes as Nino Brown. You could tell from this role he was going to have a nice career. New Jack City has been parodied, copied, and bitten countless times, but there's only one New Jack City. Number. Six, Paid in Full, 2002, directed by Charles Stone III. Man, I watched this last night, and it still slaps. Now, Paid in Full is low budget, minimal, and yet it's still so damn good. It all pretty much takes place in the same locations. Everything happens on the same block, but the director somehow made the world feel bigger than it obviously was. What holds this crazy real-life story together is the performances and chemistry of his three leads. Wood Harris, Mackay Pfeiffer, and Killer Cam all lay it down in this gritty, yet fun story of how drugs and money can get the best of people. A tragic story that has some shocking moments, but you ultimately feel so good by the end. Cameron's performance as Rico is an all-timer. I knew a kid who acted just like him in high school. We called him Rico because of it. This film works because of its simplicity and not overdoing anything. Looking up the real story, this movie should have been at least 45 minutes longer. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you've seen this movie. I swear I wanted a black sob with gold BVSs after I saw this, man. Jumping into the top five. Number five, Juice, 1992, directed by Ernest Dickerson. Now, we in the top five, and I think my top five is a little undeniable. Juice is an undeniable classic, which really showed the world who Tupac was as an actor. Juice is a story of a group of high school friends who decide to rob their local convenience store. But of course, one of them gets drunk on power and having a gun. The best parts of Juice are the moments of calm. Q spinning records, they're hanging with his older girlfriend, the homies at the record store stealing, the boys playing games at the arcade, or watching White Heat with James Cagney at Steele's house, which is one of the best gangster movies of all time, I might add. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. But all the meat of the story is crazy. This story is about portrayal, power, greed, and ambition. Everyone is ambitious in one way or another in this movie. Some positive, some negative. It ultimately shows you how it's going to go if you fly too close to the sun, though. A lot of fun and lessons to be learned in this classic hood thriller. Number four, Set It Off, 1996, directed by F. Gary Gray. 
I know a lot of people would disagree with me having this this high on the list, but I don't care. F. Gary Gray is a straight legend, and we're going to talk about more of him. He really gave us his own brand of hood movies in the 90s and eventually went on to do really big things in Hollywood. Set it off as a nice female-driven entry on this list. A movie about four ladies in L.A. who decide to rob banks in order to solve their money issues. Each of the ladies have their own motive for wanting to rob, but these girls are all family. If you've seen this movie and grew up with it like me, oh, you know it's one of the best that's just way too good to ever deny. We got all-star performances, especially from Queen Latifah and Vivica A. Fox. This was the golden era of Jada Pinkett before we added The Smith, when she was starring in great films. This action thriller not only delivers on the action, but the drama as well, giving us a real heartwarming and sympathetic story about these women who all just got caught up in something they weren't ready for. This movie is funny, memorable, stylish, well-placed, and well-edited. It's got a great score and some beautiful LA cinematography, another favorite of mine on this list for sure. Number three. Friday, 1995, directed by F. Gary Gray. <sighs> what a two-movie run this guy had. Oh, good old Friday. Friday, I think, is the movie that made every rapper want to act and make films in the 90s. Ice Cube really did set a standard and paved a way for urban cinema to thrive. This movie also put Chris Tucker on the map. Friday needs no kind of intro. It's one of the funniest hood movies ever made and one of the best stoner comedies ever made. Chris Tucker and Ice Cube have some of the best buddy chemistry in this movie about one day in the hood, one Friday. A day that could really happen. A day that is relatable with relatable hood characters. The local drug dealer, the local crackhead, the neighborhood bully, you name it. Someone from every hood is represented in this movie. This movie has been attempted to be replicated many times and not even Ice Cube himself could hit it with the sequels. Even though they are some great movies and Mike Epps is gold in them. Friday is urban cultural phenomenon with some of the best movie characters of all time. The final boss fight with Debo in the end is one of the best movie fights ever. F. Gary Gray got back-to-back -back spots on this list for a good reason. I think I know every single word to this movie. I've seen it endless amount of times. Number two. Boys in the Hood, 1991, directed by John Singleton. I know some of you are shocked this isn't number one, and if you know hood movies, then you already know what number one is if it ain't this one. Boys in the Hood is amazing, and is the quintessential hood movie, the one everyone knows, has seen, and will refer to if the topic of hood movies come up. The classic tale with so many quotable lines. Boys in the Hood is great and shows you all sides of the hood, even if it does get a little preachy at times. It covers it all, and kind of like Juice, the best moments are the calm ones. Mostly the talk Stray has with his father, Furious, who is one of the best movie dads ever. This movie, like a lot of these, is another coming-of-age story about a group of friends who are all quite different, but the hood influences them all in its own way. This is the movie that showed us Ice Cube act, the movie that really influenced the start of the hood movies coming down in droves, and the movie that showed us never stop to piss in an alley when bloods are coming down on you with shotguns. But in all seriousness, John Singleton gave us a dark and relatable lens of people living in the hood. And it didn't just have to be L.A. This was a story that was relatable to a lot of young black men in these environments because it represented each type. The troublemaker, the athlete, the smart one with good parents. All of these people exist in the hood despite what people may think. And Boys in the Hood was one of the first movies that really showed us how the hood can affect those who inhabit it. One of the most important films ever made, John Singleton cemented his legacy instantly with this one, and this film is only getting better with age. All right, guys. If you know hood movies and you know good ones, it's obvious that number one is Menace to Society, 1993, directed by the Hughes Brothers. Dead Presidents is a banger, but... There is no hood movie quite like Menace. Made by the Hughes brothers when they were only 21. This is one of my all-time favorite movies, let alone hood movies. I'm sure a lot of people will argue that Boys in the Hood should be number one, but this film is without a doubt the grittiest and most violent on the list. 
I discussed this with their other entry on this list, Dead Presidents. This film follows Kane, a young drug dealer in early 90s LA who just graduated high school, who has the summer of his life. He rides with his boy O-Dog, robbing, killing, selling drugs, getting into it with the cops, and getting drunk and high. None of that all sounds like mindless insanity, but this movie has a pulse and a heartbeat like none other. It almost plays like a horror film. Over a short run time, there isn't an ounce of fat on this thing. Something crazy happens pretty much every 10 minutes. This movie, as insane as it is, unfortunately, is how a lot of young men did and still do grow up under these circumstances. Kane was plagued since childhood with a horrible example for parents and nothing but the streets and drug dealers to teach him. This movie is about love, loss, growing up, the decisions you make, and the consequences behind them. With some of the most rewatchable and gruesome scenes, this film hits under the skin, but somehow always keeps you coming back for more. I've seen this movie so many times, and rewatching it and researching this video, I was glued like it was the first time all over again. And I saw this movie for the first time when I was five. We get a great performance from Tyron Turner, Jada Pinkett, Sam Jackson, but we all know the real star of this show as Lorenz Tate as O-Dog. I swear dudes in the hood wanted to be just like him. One of the most vicious and insane movie villains of all time, but you can't help but love him. He has some of the best quotes in the film. What you say about my mama? You feel sorry for who? This movie soundtrack is also so good with all the underground early 90s West Coast bangers. If you watching this video, I know for a fact you've seen this movie. Guys, thank you so much for watching my best hood classics. Please, please let me know your favorite hood classics of all time. I left a ton of good ones off the list and it really did hurt. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate that very much. Let me know if there is a movie or topic you'd like me to review. I got a podcast with my buddy, The Cutting Room Floor. I'll link that below for more movie content. Follow me on Letterboxd, Ralph Vader. I'll link that below as well. I will be back next week. And don't forget the popcorn.